it's a party, right? right. You want the energy high. Mm -hmm. You want people to be responsive. Mm -hmm. You want people to feel something mm -hmm. when you play something. You want to make sure you plan the the right moment of the song right. to really like right. you know bring people in and, and feel connected. Yeah. Right? It's, it's a great way to have a release, mm -hmm. right? You know, because it's a it's a real push and pull mm -hmm. moment as as a DJ or as going to an event where the DJ is in tune with the right. audience in that way. Each one of us has a story. Our journey has and is continuously impacting us. By listening to my guests share how they are discovering their best self, you will discover the best part of you. And welcome back to Discover Your Best Self podcast. Y'all, today I have with me Flash Gordon Parks, no other than the ethnomusicologist. And we are going to get right into what that really is. Listen, it is definitely a tongue tie. I was, I had to practice before I got it out. But <laughs> we have with me here today, like I said, Flash Gordon Parks. And he's going to talk all about what that means and the energy and culture that he has created here in Third Ward of Houston, which is very unique. We don't have anything else here like it. And I'm super, super um, excited to share his story and really what made him uh, come up with this idea. So please, uh, Gordon, uh, tell us who you are and where you're from. Sure. So Flash Gordon Parks grew up in Third Ward, South Park area. Uh, studied photography very early at Jack Yates High School. Later on, went to Sam Houston State to uh, get a degree in photography. And so my approach initially was to document my neighborhood, my city, um, to show the versatility, the diversity of the area, and just the many facets of you know culture here in Houston, specifically through music. So ethnomusicologist is a person who studies how music affects culture and, and the groups in which make the music and how it relates to humanity, basically. Right, right, right. I think that's super inspirational, I mean, because uh, there's a lot of things that we do that help us understand the world that we live in, but to do it through music, um, I think a lot of people can appreciate that, right? Because music is something that moves us, it's something that we listen to every day. Um, and then also everyone has their favorite, right? And um, artists, they play a huge, a huge role in that, you know, and shape our childhood, our adulthood, um, specific events that happen in our lives. Yeah, so, so absolutely. I, yeah, so I think it's, it's really dope, you know, that that's something that you focus on and you created a business around that. Um, sure. I would have never thought that that'd be something, you know, that you can, you know, find or um, be able to create an income around. But as creatives, I'm going to call you creative, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> we're always looking for that way to bring our light to the world, right? Sure. And how that can shine and, and enlighten someone else. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important, whatever you do, make sure that you love what you do mm -hmm. and that it doesn't feel like work. So, you know, this was a natural progression for me to become involved in and get more entrenched mm -hmm. in understanding, like, the history and mm -hmm. the, the music history of Houston. Right. That's one of my main focuses. Right, right. So let's go back for a moment before we kind of dive into that, sure. which is, like, who you are, right? So, you know, you're from the Third Ward area, which is a rich historical place anyway here sure. in Houston, which, um, like you said, musically has an impact on the city. But what was it that, um, you know, I guess presented itself to you at a young age? You know, what was your childhood like? Obviously, you probably listened to a lot of music. Um, absolutely. So growing up, I had a great, diverse uh, childhood. So like from elementary school to middle school to high school, um, exposed, to, exposed to a lot of different uh, mediums in terms of, you know, fine art, theater, um, dance, and music, of course, has always been an essential part of, right. of my soundtrack, right, my youth. Um, so, you know, just through different, um, throughout the years, it's just expanded on that. Mm -hmm. And then once I really start to uncover you know, just the amount of music that came out of Houston. Mm -hmm. You know, some stuff that did, you know, go beyond the city or the state mm -hmm. and become global hits. Right. But a lot of local stuff that was very good mm -hmm. um, that just never got its just due right, in terms right. of recognition. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 
And so for you, uh, you know, as you started, you probably been collecting music for quite a while, huh? Yeah, definitely. Since I was, I would say like seriously, probably like five or six. Okay. You okay. know, cassettes and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Just, just and like what is it about a song that you like? Damn, I gotta. Is there anything that sticks out uh, to you? Oh, I mean, you know, music is so it's so rich, it's so mm -hmm. much of it. Like, there's a song for every mood, mm -hmm. every feeling. Um, you know, certain things put you in a certain vibe, you know, mindset, or, you know, to get you through, mm -hmm. you know, all those kind of things. So it's hard to pinpoint, like, one yeah. particular song. But, I mean, um, you know, as a kid, hip-hop, mm -hmm. you know, rap music was near and dear to me mm -hmm. because, you know, it was in the 80s mm -hmm. when I first fell in love with it. And, wanted to know more and more about like you know it's that moment where you go from listening to what your parents are playing right. to you specifically saying i need my own right you know tapes my own music collection what was like, the what was your favorite music i think that your parents listened to um so my parents listened to a lot of you know soul music mm -hmm. so like commodore yeah. jackson five mm -hmm. um you know motown mm -hmm. stuff stevie Michael Jackson, Prince, you yeah, know, just all of the mm -hmm. the main staples in the black household in right. that era. Um, so Saturday, Sunday, clean up music. All of that, <laughs> and uh, you know, and then stuff a little bit before that, like you know, groups from the fifties, like yeah, the coasters. So it was a range of stuff from the fifties, sixties, seventies, and then contemporary, mm -hmm. like eighties stuff. But I mean, rap music was like, ah, this is something yeah. different. So like, you know, you felt. Like you were taking ownership of it, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So through rap, um, it also allowed me to go back because once rap got to the point of sampling, mm -hmm. you know, that became a big deal. So, you know, there were certain songs that, like the Osley Brothers, yeah. for instance, right? Like, I knew the Osley Brothers before people started really sampling. Right. So it's one of those rare moments where you're listening, like, wait a minute, that's the Isley. you know, like mm -hmm. where you're making the connection. Mm -hmm. But then there were other rap songs that I didn't know where the sample came from. Right. So then when you discover, like, wait a minute, this is Donald Bird or this is, you know, Luke Donaldson or like, especially during that era of rap where it was a lot of jazz. Mm -hmm. And so, like, once you start discovering, those things and then to take it even a step further mm -hmm. once you started to discover like wait a minute he's from Houston mm -hmm. like Tupac example a man from Houston right you saw it you know it so, gets unraveled yeah it hits differently mm -hmm. once once you start really going down the rabbit hole yeah so you mentioned that you studied some photography right sure. does that have any type of impact on your I guess historical you wanting to to be more entrenched, I guess, within your city and, and learning more. Yeah, so photography. Um, By the way, I love photography. The re that's the reason why when you asked me, I was like, oh, wow. Like, so I did a little bit of photography in high school. Okay. And my favorite part, although a lot of people don't do it anymore, was the de development room. Sure. And yeah. so that it was just a calming. Oh, yeah. It's almost a therapeutic uh, experience. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that was my introduction to photography, mm -hmm. you know, like to be able to process your own film, mm -hmm. develop your own photographs, like that's how I got introduced to it. So right. that's what made me love it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and my my teacher, mentor um, of that time, Ray Carrington III, who was the uh, teacher at, at Yates, mm -hmm. um, he showed us how photography could be used as a as a way of documentation. Okay. You know what I mean? Is like, a, a a creative school? Yes. Yeah, okay. A school of communication. Okay, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm so, not a Houstonian. Oh yeah, no worries. Listen, they they claim that I could be. I've been sure. here for ten years. Okay. But I still have to learn some things. So I'm like, I think Gates is the creative yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're gonna embrace you. Thank I'll you. Bring you into the <laughs> Um, yeah, so Yates is a school of communication, mm -hmm. so it covers photography, media, of course, so radio and television. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at the time, it was like newspaper yeah. and drafting. Like, you know, it's evolved, mm -hmm. of course, over time. But the two biggest programs were the photography program, yeah. and uh, at the time, it was called Media Tech, which is radio and television. Nice. Um, so, but when you're in that 
in that school communication, you kind of get exposed to all of it. Right. And then you choose which one really aligns with your, mm -hmm. you know, um, preference, yeah. if you will. So for me, photography was great, and it was it was black and white photography. Yeah, let me point I that love out black too. and white. <laughs> so yeah, so it's like the original process um, development, you know, being in the dark room, like you said, therapeutic, mm -hmm. calming, you know, just trying to get it right, you know. And there's a certain feeling about watching a photograph come to life, you know, it is. because. There's so many steps mm -hmm. in order to get the end product. And for me, it was about the process. Mm -hmm. So it was like, uh, you know, because you have to already see what it is you want to mm -hmm. take a photo of. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Ray taught us to see what it is we were shooting before we even click the button. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To, yeah. to, to crop it in your what mind. What is it that you're, that you're wanting to capture? Right, right. What's that story? Sure. That and then, you want to tell. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. another thing, too. We had to write about right. what we did, too. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to combine, like, mm -hmm. all of these different, um, you know, expressions and, you know, mediums and really making you well-rounded mm -hmm. as, as an artist, as yeah. a journalist, or as, you know, how creative. Being creative, <laughs> definitely being creative. Yeah. So, yeah, that was an early sort of, um, you know, part of my development as an artist. And... It still lends itself to other facets of what I do. You know? Right. Just to be able to see things. What's everywhere. the correlation, do you think, when you, because I love how you said capturing that moment. What is it, you know, about music that you like to capture and tell that story? Um. So, you know, with music, it depends on how I'm uh, presenting it. Right. So as a DJ. Yeah. Y'all um, have the control, though. Sure. And, you know, it depends on what type of set it is, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it's just, if it's a party, right? right. You want the energy high. Mm -hmm. You want people to be responsive. Mm -hmm. You want people to feel something mm -hmm. when you play something. You want to make sure you plan the, the right moment of the song right. to really, like, right. you know, bring people in and, and feel connected, yeah. right? It's, it's a great way to have a release, mm -hmm. right? You know, because it's a it's a real push and pull mm -hmm. moment as as a DJ or as going to an event where the DJ is in tune with the audience right. in that way, right? So that's one aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Then there could be a, you know maybe you're just you know the mission isn't to have the party up, but yeah. it's, it's a vibe, right? Like yeah. You want to make sure it fits. The feeling of, of what's going on, so whether it's an art uh, exhibition opening, right? right? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure the soundtrack isn't overpowering, yes. you know, but it feels good, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Or like, so there's it has to match sure. what you, ambiance. the ambiance of what I understand was exactly sure. what you mean. I I held an event. Sure. It was a women's summit. Okay. And I told the DJ, yeah. <laughs> I gave him samples of the type of music I wanted to give the, the feeling, sure. totally did his own thing. Mm. And so my friend, she goes, uh-oh, the DJ's playing Sunday church, kind right, of right, like, right, right, you right. know, so it felt like your family reunion. I'm like, I understand you see some black people coming in. Sure. That's not the vibe right, at right, all. Right, right, like, right. it has to change immediately. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, you know, if you're, if you're on the radio, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing a program of sorts, you know, mm -hmm. whether it be podcast, right. you, know, or, right. you know, maybe you want to educate, yes. you know, maybe you want to talk a little bit about who this artist is mm -hmm. and their connection to such and such, and maybe their work outside of just music, you right. know, things they've done. So there's all kind of ways we can use music as a tool to mm -hmm. elevate, right? Yeah. You know, there's several ways it can, it can uh react and respond to the people. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Do you think it's a, a psychological thing as well? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, every time you play, you're trying to get into the minds of who's there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, because, you know, and this, I, this I imagine goes for any type of performance, mm -hmm. right? Like comedian, mm -hmm. singer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, guitarist, keyboard, like whatever. If you're on a if you're in a space of performance where you have to give something, mm -hmm. you definitely want to analyze the crowd as best you can. Mm -hmm. You know, you're picking up on 
certain tales yeah. that are nonverbal most mm-hmm. of the time, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what type of music you like specifically. Mm-hmm. I can't tell just by looking at you. Right. I can assume right and I can put little things out there to see how you tap your foot and yeah. you nod your head if you get up and dance. Yeah. Then I know, okay, I'm I'm going in the right direction. Right. You right. know, but I think as an artist, as a performer, you mm-hmm. wanna make people connect with what you're doing. For sure. So you you're trying to, you know, make that happen by playing things, mm-hmm. you know, um, playing things that uh, work in that in that right. capacity. So when you all started this concept of, you know, bringing to life um, here where we are, right? Sure. And saying, you know, well let's play music, you know, we can get a coffee shop, but all of these things all in one, right? Yeah. What was the general idea? How did you even come to the concept? So, uh, so we're here at Mo Better Brews, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, um, and this is a unique concept of coffee, vegan breakfast, yeah. and vinyl records. We sell records. Um, my contribution is uh, the vinyl shop curator here. So everything music that you see around the shop. Um, is something that you know I've contributed, mm-hmm. and it started with um, a company called Houston Sauce Company, mm-hmm. which is a couple, uh, Courtney Lindsay and Chastity Lindsay, and they've been successful in the city by bringing a unique vegan experience mm-hmm. through sort of like um, you know elevating like you know fried collard wings. Uh, you know, burgers, uh, po' boys, mm-hmm. uh, soul food. Like yeah. they have all types of great offerings um, through Courtney, who's the chef, right. um, and his wife Chastity, who's a excellent mind of you know promotions and just complimenting in every facet. And so they came to me with the idea because nice. we had collaborated, you know, over the years mm-hmm. in various things. And so um, this was an opportunity to bring. You know, uh, lifestyle together because this is it's I mean, a lifestyle. Yeah, we are mm-hmm. vegan. Yeah, we're not just selling mm-hmm. vegan food. This is how right. we eat. You know, right. and there was a void for this type of mm-hmm. um, you know uh, offering in the city. You know, mm-hmm. to be able to come to a place where you can get an all vegan breakfast from yeah. top to bottom, not putting something and making it fit. Or, you right, know what I mean? right, like, right. Doing your best, like it's all vegan, and it's mm-hmm. it's. Great. It's really good. You know, and it's it's rooted in, you know, our culture, right? Mm-hmm. You know, as black people, as people from the South, mm-hmm. as, you know, Texas. So mm-hmm. the, the portions are still like making big. you feel <laughs> like, that you know, like big. that, yeah, like that warm hug, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But still a healthier option for you as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and then music. Music is a huge part. You know, we all love music. Music is something that brings people together. Mm-hmm. You know, vinyl is a great way to uh, encapsulate, you know, many different eras of music. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all types of things that um, were put on vinyl in the last 50, 60 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so some of those things are offered here. You know, it's a way to learn. You right. know, it's a way to go back in time and still see a future. Right. You know, it's it's because it's all relative and it's all still connected, mm-hmm. and a lot of the music still relates to this day. Mm-hmm. So. And what I will say too is, if you ever get a chance to stop by, it's beautiful. Oh, thank like you. it's a it's a it, it looks aesthetically nice. Thank you. Right when you walk in, it's you know greenery, flowers, and plants. Sure. And, you know, it's very uh, vegan esque. I guess oh, if yeah. you were to think of a vegan, you know what I mean. Sure, you would sure, want sure. it to be. Surrounded by natural, by nature. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Life. It's yeah. Kind of breathing life. Yeah, living, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And the inside is, you know, for those of you who may not be able to see the video, but inside it's it's windows open. Oh yeah, natural. Very open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, we we're so fortunate to have this space. You know, twelve old months out from here. Yeah. You know, come down, <laughs> check it out. Um, and then on Saturdays we have different DJs mm-hmm. also curate, you know, the music mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, the vibe and, you know, brunch and yeah. you know, that whole thing and you know, it's a nice patio, you mm-hmm. know, you can sit out, have a mimosa, yeah. you know, have <laughs> some uh, pancakes, waffles. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it's just it's a great experience, and I encourage you know if you're in the Houston area to come check it out. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And so, do you do anything else outside of here as far as DJing, or mainly are you here? No, I, I DJ all over the city okay. and do various things. So every Friday, I play at a at another restaurant called Brazil, which is okay. in Montrose. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah. I was like, okay, I saw, how was that? Um, it's great. Okay. Um, I play on the patio. Okay. Um, so the the food is great. Mm-hmm. You know, full bar. Um, yeah. But you know, it's it's a great opportunity just to hear some you know some music that mm-hmm. you might not always hear. Mm-hmm. You know, depending mm-hmm. on the spaces you mm-hmm. frequent. But you know, it's just a great space for people to hang out. Mm-hmm. You know, connect. Even in the pandemic, to right. feel safe, you know, to feel um, connected. Right, right, right. So, for you, what are you thinking about in the future? You know, um, music, help me with the word. Ethnomusic Eth- colleges. Yes, ethnomusic colleges. Um, <laughs> so, another thing that I've done over time, um, I've directed two films. Okay. Um, so, a documentary called This Thing We Do. Houston DJ culture revealed, and you can watch it on YouTube. Okay. Um, and it's a sort of a snapshot of Houston DJ culture over the years, um, ranging from the 60s mm-hmm. into current times, mm-hmm. and just showing the diversity of Houston DJs. Okay. You know, different uh, different people over time have contributed to DJ culture, mm-hmm. and a lot of people might not be aware that Houston offers such a diverse right. uh, style of music. Mm-hmm. You know, so I talk with a lot of great DJs in the film who have done some amazing things, whether it's through parties, through radio, mm-hmm. through you know events, uh, mobile DJing. Right. You know, which is <laughs> which is huge still to this day because you know, yeah, you can make a playlist, yeah, you can mm-hmm. you know stream some music, but. There's something about the human element of somebody really so, being able mm-hmm. to curate sound in a proper way. It's, mm-hmm. it's something that shouldn't be understated. It should definitely be compensated. Like the way it, it changes the mood, yeah. and it's a huge component of mm-hmm. having taking an okay event yes. to being a great event. That's definitely true. You can go somewhere and literally say the vibe is just not right, and then you go down the street and you're like, okay, it's it doesn't even have to be a bunch of people in there. Oh, no, it's no. just like this is a nice sure. vibe, and most of the time it's because of the music yeah. and and all of that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the energy. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. it's just knowing what you're doing. Yeah, like anything. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, but some people don't they don't understand that like you know yeah, they don't get the effort or the creativity or sure. the thought that it takes to do that. Sure. Well, we can take it back to, you know, film, right? And yeah. Development, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People just want to see the final product. Right. They don't know all <laughs> that you have to go through to make that photo look, look as good like as it does. Yeah. The, the moments of mm-hmm. I didn't get it right. I yeah. make sure I'm doing it correctly. The dark room work. Yeah. You know, the development. I like that. The dark room work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't see that. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. And that's that's usually how it is. It's mm-hmm. about what you don't see that usually makes things what it is. Yeah. It's the yeah. Prep. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So in the future, I feel like you should be teaching somewhere. Um, you know, I am very <laughs> lucky to have opportunities mm-hmm. to share. Um, you know, in the space, more better brews, we, we make a concerted effort to mm-hmm. educate people about Houston culture. So a lot of the records like on the wall when you come in are all Houston records and uh, you know they have history they have Mm -hmm. significance so you know I do get opportunities to share you know about various things I've been fortunate to talk at you know a few of the art institutions here um, you know at U of H at Rice so you know it's something that you know I'm considering as I I get older (laughs) Okay. Okay. Nice. So my last question that I have to ask all of my guests, which is, you know, what does it mean to you to discover your best self? Oh, um, to discover your best self is so important. You know, it's it's an opportunity to learn who you are, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, what you like, what you don't like, what you can uh, manage, Mm -hmm. you know, what you can uh, 
that you can take. Yeah. You know, the pressure, mm -hmm. um, less pressure, more pressure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, to discover your best self is probably the closest you'll get to, you know, optimum or maximization. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like making sure you're doing the most you can, the best you can every time out. And feeling good about that. Yeah. You know, not, um, not feeling like you could have did more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like just doing enough, but also making sure you rest and making sure you're mm -hmm. taking care of yourself. Yeah. So I think in, in discovery, you know what works for you and right. what doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I need eight hours of sleep yeah. or I need six <laughs> hours of sleep, like whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's definitely important that you know who you are in order to, you know, be a better contributor mm -hmm. to culture and right. community and like like once you know thyself then you can give to others. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That was great. Thank you. Yes. So how can people find you? Um so you can find me on social media, um, Flash G Parks on Instagram, Twitter, Flash Gordon Parks on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And yep. I'm doing some great things in the city of Houston, <laughs> uh, especially coming up in the fall and the winter, winter time. So wait a minute, what's happening? You're not gonna just leave us with a cliffhanger like that. <laughs> so um, there's some really cool events happening. One of one of a great event that's coming in November um, is uh, it's called uh, Dirty South Exhibition, okay. and it was curated by Valerie. Cassell Oliver, who's right. now living in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And so she put together this excellent exhibition of multiple things about the South, the dirty South, you know, whatever that means to you, right? Like, <laughs> um, but just all facets of the South. So, you know, the Atlantas, the New Orleans, Houston, of course, yeah. um, you know, Virginia, which yeah. is the South, right? North Carolina, South Carolina, mm -hmm. Florida. So all of these spaces, which have their own uniqueness, right, are all coming together nice. with various artists to sort of play, pay homage to that. So I'll be helping out musically, yeah. like doing some cool things for the opening yeah. and throughout the exhibition. So it'll be here? It'll, it's coming here on November the 4th. Oh, the okay. So I don't know when this is going to air. But yeah, it should be time. definitely before then. Okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you get an opportunity, uh, Contemporary Arts Museum, Dirty South Exhibition, I promise you won't be disappointed. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic. I feel like special. I got to come in here uh, yeah. <laughs> and talk to you just about, you know, this and the curation of something that's been um, you know, a part, that is a part of Houston. Sure. Um, and so I love learning just on all perspectives, and that's why I think it's important for us to talk about people's lives and journeys. And, you know, I'm creating my own library of, you know, people that I encounter with and, and documenting their journey sure. so that we have that for people to go back and listen to and learn later when we're not here, maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I think what you're doing is very important. Mm -hmm. um, now we're in the era where we can take ownership mm -hmm. of our narrative and tell mm -hmm. our own stories yeah. and not have to wait for others to do so. So that's why it's important the work that I'm doing mm -hmm. um, be a love letter to Houston, mm -hmm. you know, my hometown. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about where you were from. No. <laughs> Originally. But you've been I'm, here. Yeah. But you've been I'm, here from, I'm from Ohio, from Cincinnati. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You know. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Um, but, you know, you being a transplant here, mm -hmm. you know, it's important also that people that are coming here learn and understand how long a lot of this stuff has been going on. Yeah. Around, you know, because there are a lot of Native Houstonians like myself mm -hmm. who still don't know. Yeah. You know, and I'm talking recent history. I'm mm -hmm. not even talking about, yeah. you know, before we were born <laughs> type stuff. I'm talking about in the last 20 years. Yeah. A lot of great things have happened and people are just kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, they're in their silos. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to be able to tell our stories. And yeah. It's cool that you're doing that. And thank you for. Yeah, you yeah, know, for sure. <laughs> well, thank you. This has been great. I hope y'all catch him. Um, I think you'll enjoy this story just as much as I did get to interview um, him. So uh, don't miss out on this episode. Thank you for listening to Discover Your Best Self. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. 
Follow us on Instagram at Discover Your Best Self.